Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. Go Go back. back. (laughs) Start again. (laughs) Start over. Ah, The whole life. Just redo it. Listen, it's been a really, really messed up week. Oh, my God. (laughs) How are you doing? (laughs) I've been saying that phrase since, like, 2012. Since that... Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) My life is a wreck. (laughs) I think you should go first today, Cody. How are you doing? I'm great. I finally got my... uh, Invisibility cloak taken off, and I'm fully a fully visible human being, <laughs> a fully visible oh my sexual God. human being. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It's been it's been a long year. <laughs> I had no idea where that sentence was going, <laughs> but I love everything about it. So I'm proud of you. Wow! And Rachel Wipers was the first person to like this photo, <laughs> so I feel like I just called the bisexuals all to my post. <laughs> yeah, I mean. You basically should have just, like, tagged her in it, Dan. Uh, yeah, I really should have just added her. Anyway, how are you doing? Great. Um, first of all, stop posting Instagrams while we're podcasting. I did it before we recorded, bitch. Um, Don't even come for me. <laughs> Don't even come for me. I am great. It's been a very wild week. As you may have noticed in our announcement section <laughs> of our podcast, I have written something just to try to warm you up to the story that I would be telling for you today. And a few of you may have know this as well. I was substituting in elementary school this week and it was wild (laughs) to say the least. There's a few things that I would like you all to know. One, I did the hokey pokey and the chicken (laughs) dance for the first time since I was a competitive roller skater. So I need, whoa, was... everyone shut up. I need you to Wait. step back 5,000 <laughs> steps. Wait, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Competitive roller skater? Yeah, I thought that I have told this story before. You might, I feel like we've talked about roller skating, but I didn't think, I didn't register in my brain that you competitively roller skate. Listen, I am Leslie No. Uh, <laughs> like, I do better on roller skates than I do in real life. Listen, and, and I get that. I remember that very vividly. But yes. the phrase competitive roller skater is not yes. registering in my brain <laughs> at the same tenacity. I, listen, when I talked to you last week about glitter roots, <laughs> I was talking from a very specific component an era of my life <laughs> when I had a lot of glitter in my hair and on my sequined clothes. Uh-huh. I wore a lot of tights with my roller skates. I had a Winnie the Pooh suitcase that I carried all of my stuff in. Uh. I roller skated since literally before I could walk until I was six when my parents started making me do team sports so that I could interact with humans. Wow. Because apparently roller skaters are humans. (laughs) Roller skaters are just lone wolves, you know? (laughs) (laughs) But yes, so I was a competitive roller skater, so I have not done those dances since I was on skates, so I did them on land (laughs) this week with um, my elementary schoolers, which is a wild ride. The other update that I thought that I would give humans that are not in elementary schools any longer. (laughs) Cody, do you, do you remember? (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Lay it on me. (laughs) Do you remember those lizards made out of beads that we would attach (gasps) to bass, like backpacks and stuff? Yes. I used to, I used to make those like all the time. That was my fucking shit. Same. I could not make them though. So I would just take them. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I am pleased to inform you that those still exist in elementary schools today. That's, I love that that's transcended, you know? 
I feel like a lot of things have come and go. Like, I remember, I have a cousin who, she's, like, 13 now, but, like, when she was growing up, she wouldn't, when I say, art, like, Roy G. Babe, she have, would have no idea what I'm talking about. And that seems, that's like, that seems, like, just, like, fucked up. <laughs> it's like, what? Because, A, nobody teaches indigo anymore, which is fucked up, justice for indigo. Anyway. <laughs> Honestly, same. <laughs> People keep saying it's purple. It's not purple. It's the in-between of purple and blue, because it's indigo. Anyway, I, I'm just bad. Go off. I Please, will. Like, I just... <laughs> I'm gonna sit back here and drink my ginger ale. You just have a moment, please. <laughs> and, like, I mean, not that anyone really got anything f- from learning cursive, but, like, my generation was pretty much, or, like, my, like, grade basically was, like, the last time anyone ever learned <laughs> the cursive in school, and they just, like, now, dipped right after hold that. on. Yeah. I need you to continue this rant, but could you please do me the honor <laughs> of doing a back in my day? Please, please, for the animators that are going to do this, I need you, I need you to go back and do it for me, please. Ah. Uh, now go. Back in my day, <laughs> the sanctity of elementary school was attacked and not just burned down by the technology. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you asked for this! I did. Uh, listen, I... Penmanship was, or, like, I guess cursive or whatever the fuck, was the only or class that I failed. I got a D in elementary school in penmanship oh because I was left-handed, and then I learned at the school I went to before didn't teach me fucking anything about a cursive, and then by the time I got to another school, they had already done it for a year or two, and I was like, fuck, uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> and so I got a D, my only D ever in life. Damn. One of my favorite moments, and we'll transition from this, I promise, but this <laughs> we'll get to is somewhere. gonna get... All right, this episode's gonna get dark really quick, so just stick with us for a moment. One of my favorite moments from teaching elementary school this week was we had an early release on Wednesday, and so one of the kiddos, who was one of the first graders that I had in this class, we were just about to leave, and he was like, teacher, and he said it like that, and it was, <laughs> oh my god, and he had me wrapped around his finger, it was so fucked up. Um, he was like, teacher, I'm tired, and I was like, me too, kiddo, you're about to leave though, and he was like, I want to take a nap when I get home. And I was like, that's a great idea. I want to do that too. And he was like, you should take a nap at my house when we get done with school. And I was like, kiddo, thank you, (laughs) but I'm going to pass. How about never? (laughs) And I just left. (laughs) But it was really sweet because he was like, teacher. And I was Uh, like, how does your voice do that thing? (laughs) (laughs) So it was really sweet. So it's been a really fucked up week um, in life, but apparently lizards made out of beads still exist Ugh, and they and prevail I put the hokey pokey on youtube from australian dancers in pink wigs is a thing that uh, I... <laughs> elementary school teachers google and find so yikes wow so, yeah. well that was been uh ali's up. education corner <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna transition to some fucked up shit so sorry about it yeah uh, but this is in fact a twilight podcast you have not been transitioned to some alternate universe where we talk about <laughs> other things sorry <laughs> so current events corner it was a slow news week uh up until about the past 48 hours yep however before we start talking about that we have to for my sake but mainly for cody's sake talk about the wonderland photo shoot that our paths was in bitch my whole life (laughs) It's just, it's so good. Like, a lot of people, like, I retweet onto her account because somebody was like, dates FK and Twigs once, and, like, that was the first thought that I had when seeing these photos. Literally. <laughs> and it's so good. Like, I, I wasn't sure if they were still a thing because I just, I don't, I don't really hear about either of them too much, at least in the press, because they kind of both stay low a lot of the times until they do something. Right. And they're like, hello, I'm here, did you miss me? But I was, like, very happy that they're still together and very happy that they're being, like, the greatest power couple ever, and I love it. And this whole photo shoot is amazing because Robert Pattinson is just wearing a pink wig and just has a bunch of shit on his face and, like, the artistic design. Hello. Great. I love it. It's just... And he's wearing, like, these harem pants and, like, fishnets, which is, like, a mood. But also, like, vans, you know what I mean? (laughs) Everything about it, I just... I want to know everything. I want to be where the people are. Honestly, it's just like, I want to know what the process was, though, and like, (laughs) how on board our pets was. Was he just like, here's my idea, and he brought in his own folder. Could you imagine? (laughs) I've been thinking about modern art for a while, and I just wanted to like, (laughs) be it, you know what I mean? (laughs) All I'm imagining is him like, I don't know, just like, (laughs) smoking a doob, and just being like, listen. (laughs) 
Listen. And then he just, like, puts his hair up in a bun and is like, just let me at him. Oh, my gosh. So, so my next that- text tone is going to be Ali saying, smoking a dupe. That's going to be <laughs> my next text tone. I um, don't know how drugs work. <laughs> And that's okay. my ringtone. There it is. We're all set. We're good. We got the whole package. <laughs> I don't want to be where the people are, but I'm... What is it called? Straight Edge for Life, right? <laughs> like, that's what I'm... <laughs> um, whatever. Fuck it. Fuck all of you. <laughs> anyway, look at these photos. They are good. They're great. They're great. Okay. So... Hmm. <laughs> all right. This is the part where I just am going to banshee scream for the next like (laughs) 20 minutes Mm -hmm. so like two weeks ago i'm pretty sure three weeks ago maybe we announced dinky reed had a child Uh great happy stuff healthy pregnancy yay and so (laughs) now we need to talk about some serious shit that happened this week in the form of a podcast that came out with (sighs) ian and nikki and ian being trashed (laughs) yep so I listened to the podcast. It's called Dr. Berlin's Informed Pregnancy Podcast. Mm-hmm. So it's a two part thing, whatever. They talk about their relationship and like their pregnancy and everything about it. And like their midwife is on it and everything like that. But mm-hmm. basically, the reason why some people are up in arms about this is because Ian admits to throwing out Nikki Reed's birth control pills. <sighs> <sighs> um, and, and that's how they started their process of getting pregnant. <sighs> and he, like, once she finds out and gets, like, pissed about it, he, like, recorded her getting upset. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so not good. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. So it's the worst thing. Yeah. So in the podcast, they, like, laugh. Like, Dr. Berlin and the midwife, they, like, laugh about it because they're like, ha, 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 this is, like, love. And it's like, it's not No. Love. Um, <laughs> that's not, <laughs> um, this is called reproductive abuse. <laughs> so, I hate it and it's the worst thing. Um, Nikki has responded to a lot of people getting, like, up in arms about this, um, and, like, quote, taking her, the, like, this story out of context and everything. She, like, wrote this long thing on Twitter (laughs) and said that it was, like, bullshit and that, like, uh, don't disrespect me and, like, how dare you be about, like, women's rights without, like, getting my approval and all this stuff. Yeah. However, what do you expect her to do? Just, like, turn on her... Actually, I'm getting a divorce. I'm just gonna have this kid. Like, that's that's so messy. I listened to, like, basically the two hours of the podcast. I haven't known anything about Ian up until this point, Mm -hmm. but the dude sounds controlling as fuck. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It's mentioned throughout the whole thing. One, I didn't know that they had a 10-year age difference. Oh, Um, man. The first time that they met, she was 16. (laughs) What? Um... (laughs) On, like, their second date, he was convinced that they were going to get married. Um, She wasn't sure that she wanted to have kids, and he was, like, dead set that he wanted to have kids before he turned 40. Uh, Like, there's a lot of, like, sketchy shit that they talk about. I just felt like it was important to talk about this as, like, a follow-up, and I am firmly anti-everything that's happening here. Yeah. Because that's... Like, don't listen. Mm. (laughs) There's a difference between being like, we're going to make this joint decision and throw these down the toilet together (laughs) as, like, a weird ceremony (laughs) Um, versus, like, he did this without her consent. So, like, no. No, (sighs) ma'am. No. And I just feel bad because this puts Nikki in a really weird position. There was a lot of, like, uncomfortable laughing on her part during um, the podcast she calls him presumptuous a lot and it's like honey i know what you mean by that (laughs) like so i just i hope that she is safe i hope that their baby is safe uh i hope that it all gets taken care of yeah is all i want to say about that uh okay uh we did get some questions this week yeah We got a lot more questions than normal. Yeah, um, hello. Free Tanner related, so that's interesting. Um, Apparently, a lot of people have feelings about this. The first one that we got, Cody and I'm very interested in your opinion on this, um, was from our Tumblr, and it was, if Edward (laughs) is as hard as stone, does he just have a perpetual boner? I'm handing the mic over to you. I'm leaning more towards, like, he's perpetually hard, because he's, like, a very stiff rock boy, you know? (laughs) 
You know what I mean? Yeah. But the Medusa was fun because, like, I don't know, in, in also relation to, like, getting turned on, like, boom, there it is. But, like, also looking at someone being like, hi, you're now rocks. And also, so is your penis. Hello. Proceed. Ooh. <laughs> but also, maybe that's why he doesn't want to fuck Bella, you know what I mean? Like, I also respect his choices not to fuck her, even though she wants the dick, like, literally more than anything in her entire life. But, <laughs> yeah, maybe he's just, like, self-conscious, you know? Because he's got, like, a, a rock dick, you know what I mean? Oh my god. Why is it that <laughs> as soon as you said that, I started imagining Edward as a Pokemon? <laughs> 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 that's so fucked up. <laughs> Sometimes I hate my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I love okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I I lean towards your answer as well. It's just hard to imagine that, that Edward with also this idea of him being a blushing bride. Right, so. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's no way he's, like, constantly ready to go. <laughs> and still yeah. just being like, no, nobody touch me. Stop. It Pure. also, that theory, though, would also make sense with why he's so constantly, like, that's fair. Head case and just be like, also like on like, guard. Like, please God, do not literally touch anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our next question. <laughs> um, so the Collins have become a Partridge Family type band. What does everyone play, and how are the Collins involved? You mean the Swans? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I'm incapable of reading. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, I... <laughs> Sorry for fucking up your question, person that I can't say. <laughs> oh, God. I don't I care don't... <laughs> about anyone in this band, but I really... I really want, like, uh, fucking Emmett to be, like, on, like, one of those tin drums or something. Oh my <laughs> you God. know what I mean? Like, I the marimba types. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. First of all, yes. I want... Edward to play the tuba, <laughs> just <laughs> because, like, like he's the, he's the only one that knows how to play an instrument, you're like, nah, fuck it, give him a tuba. <laughs> I just, like, I love the wet blanket component of it all, like. Oh my god. <laughs> I just, uh. I don't know. I, even though I know Carlisle's probably, like, really skilled with it, there's mm-hmm. something really charming to me about him being on, like, the triangle or something. Yeah, I'm a fan. Um, or no, I actually think, I think that'd be funny for, like, Rosalie, because she didn't want to be a part of this, but they just handed her something to, like, <laughs> tap every five minutes. <laughs> so she's, like, passive aggressive, like, this, yes, ding. Yes, yes, I love that, I love that, I love ding. that. <laughs> like, hey, Rosalie, can you put a little more energy into that, actually? <laughs> Thank you. I, yes. <laughs> she's like, this is literally the most that you're gonna get out of me. <laughs> Take two on Thanks the triangle, for playing. please. <laughs> What's wrong with feeling? Come on, Rosalie! Just, like, throws Um, it on the ground. (laughs) Yes, I love that so much. You know Esme would be on that harp. Oh, hell yeah. Also, what is this band? Like, none of these instruments go together? (laughs) I mean, not with that attitude. (laughs) Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You got me there. Um, I don't know how music works, so... (laughs) Listen, okay, there's another story for you. I was in my first music class during my teaching with elementary school this week for the first time in 11 years. And I was so terrified. I couldn't even, I had to focus so hard on watching the students because I was like immersed with watching the music teacher. And I was like, all we're doing is literally like patting our legs with a rhythm. And I was so fucked up. I was like, I can't, I don't, I don't, I can't do it. I, yeah. Um, Okay, how are the swans involved? Charlie is definitely recording this and posting it on youtube absolutely because hi <laughs> um he's like the I mean don't... girl's mom where he's just, just like kind of in the audience oh and like standing God. at the very front being like you guys are doing amazing <laughs> but like mostly zooming in on carlisle you know what i mean oh my god yeah. literally and bella i don't know what kind of instrument would bella play what like the instrument yeah what is she capable of doing without literally tripping over everything and like fucking it up so <laughs> What if she, like, goes really hard on rock band, though? Like, what if she's, like, Whoa. a... Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't... Like, so she don't just know. plays, like, the rock band guitar. Guitar? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, it doesn't make... It's, like, it's, like the tapping of the keys. <laughs> like, the permitting <laughs> all the buttons. Oh, my God. Yeah, and so that means that, like, Alice is in the back playing the actual guitar and, like, yeah. <laughs> making her feel better. I love it. Teamwork makes the dream work. Honestly. Um, okay. There were a lot of people that had a lot of feelings about Brie Tanner, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. <clears throat> Seth. Um, and... <laughs> my son. The, 
And we did get some information about the wigs that we mentioned, aka it's Correction Corner's time. Correction. Uh, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> Sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we're wrong, aka most of the time. Um, <laughs> we should have said last week, meow, 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 um, is that Kristen Stewart only wore an, a wig during Eclipse. She had extensions during Twilight and New Moon. Okay. Meow, meow, meow. I'm very thankful for this correction because that's secretly what I thought inside. Because, like, when we were talking, I think it was when we were talking about uh, Twilight, the first movie, and you were like, God, can we talk about her wig? And I was like, uh huh, yeah, sure. And I'm like, was she wearing a wig? I didn't think she was wearing a wig. But then Literally, we just. I don't fucking. <laughs> I, and I was just playing this charade, but then as soon as uh, clips happened, we were like, oh, this is this is a wig. We talk about this every time, but as soon as I press stop on Audacity, <laughs> everything that we've said, like, drips out of me. <laughs> like, I can't. It's like that fucking part in Harry Potter where Dumbledore pulls those memories out of himself. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know where they go, though, because I don't save them. Um, yeah, well. The... The extensions makes a lot more sense, though, because in New Moon, her hair did not look like her hair, but it definitely yeah. didn't look like a wig. So, right, yeah. Shout out to Corrections Corner, literally from Anonymous. So, like, yeah, thanks. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, ah! <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so excited about this. Um, hey, Cody. Yeah. Could you take a walk with me? I would want nothing more. Oh. <laughs> now, Cody. Yeah. I think that you should do the honor of announcing what this is because you were the one that told me that we got this email. So, uh, this oh! episode of Into the Twilight is brought to you by someone. Oh my god. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> bitch. Um, Specifically, yeah, also, Pine and Blush. Say, but, yeah. Also, I keep, and I was telling Cody about this too, um, I keep saying Pine and Blush because <laughs> <laughs> I'm so funny every Parks time. and Rec. <laughs> it's, it's Pine and Blush. It's Pine, don't get me wrong, don't fucking fuck this up, people. It's yeah, Pine and this Blush. This is important. It's but Pine like, and Blush. But I just, I feel like the content of it is so, like, out there and so, like, a hipster and so, like, you don't even deserve this content that, like, it should be Pine and Blush because of Parks and Rec. <laughs> hey, um, Allie, uh, what is Pine and Blush? Okay, so this is an Etsy store, and it's run by a Into the Twilight favorite listener, Audrey Swenson. So, like, first of all, hi. Um, and this Etsy store is all of this jewelry that's, like, raw crystal and, like, hand-stamped, and it's fucking gorgeous. It is a Pinterest Instagram dream. Like, woof. I cannot handle how gorgeous it is. And my favorite thing about it, and I don't know if it's your favorite thing about it, Cody, because I can't, I don't know your life. I don't, who are you? <laughs> um, but every purchase that's made on this Etsy store, the there's a portion of the sales that it is donated to to write love on her arms, which mm-hmm. is a uh, organization for suicide awareness and prevention, which like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty sick. I love that. That's one of my personal favorite organizations. So that made me very happy to find out. Yeah, dude. When you listen to this, there will be new inventory in yeah. stock to shop and support. So fucking get is- that shit. Get some crystals. Yeah. Get some necklaces. Get some fucking hand stamped jewelry. Do you know what this reminds me of? This this kind of jewelry reminds me of the kind of stuff that would sell in the store that Bella went to in Port Angeles to oh get that Quilly Legends With book. My favorite, like, witch woman who's just like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bathing in kombucha is like hello welcome to my mystical store hello yeah exactly all Basically this like dream. witchy shit i love it yeah. um but yeah it's all i would check out the instagram too it's just um pine and blush and it's very beautiful and i would definitely recommend supporting a person of our community yeah. audrey and their website is pine and blush yeah yeah <laughs> If you want to be a sponsor, or if you're like, hey, I want to get my friend a nice little gift, which is in the form of a a note or a letter read by us shitheads, you can do so (laughs) on our website, or our big cartel, intothetwilight.bigcartel.com, where you can also get pins and fun stuff. So, just, like, see what's up, you know what I mean? Yeah. We will happily fuck up your Etsy store name (laughs) and say shit about your best friend. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fantastic to me. So, should we talk about Brie Tanner? Let's talk about Brie Tanner. 
this a hundred thousand word uh, novella <laughs> manifesto yes a wet dream uh, if you will <laughs> so it's a wild one but i can't say that i hated it no i mean it's not the worst thing that i've personally read by stephanie meyer i would say like legitimately the stuff that aren't official twilight books have been my favorite things that i've read like i really enjoyed midnight sun and i enjoyed Bree tanner yeah like there were moments for both of them where i was like well it time to go but that's it <laughs> stephanie like it's it would be impossible not for that not to happen but like it just seemed better structured and it just seemed like yeah. i don't know better written i agree the fucked up thing about that is I adore Bella as a yeah, character, too. Yeah. And so she just doesn't get the justice of no. Stephanie. <laughs> like, no. Uh, oh, no. well. Because, um, well, I would say I objectively like Bella, but if I, the second I'm in her head, I'm like, I get me out of here. Bye-bye. Literally give yeah. me any other perspective. Thank <laughs> you, ma'am. Uh, it's the worst. This novella has an introduction by Stephanie Meyer, obviously, and it mentions <laughs> my favorite part about the introduction is that it says <laughs> that Eclipse was edited, and I was like, <laughs> by who? <laughs> 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 Sorry, uh, <laughs> source? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, I started to think about Brie and start writing this novella while I was editing Eclipse, and I was like, bitch, what <laughs> are you talking about? You um, didn't just like spit all of that out in like a yeah. two a 48 hour burst and then just sent it to the publisher and made a billion dollars yeah the her editor was like hey stephanie hope you're doing well just to let you know um your deadline is tomorrow <laughs> so hope that i can get that pdf soon love your editor and stephanie was like shit and just like <laughs> like just hit all those keys really fast there were some cool things about this, though. So, actors who played Riley, Bree, and Victoria apparently all read this novella prior to filming Eclipse, mm. um, which makes a lot more sense, yeah. right? Because they didn't have a lot of rich history <laughs> in Eclipse anyway. It wasn't a lot of lore for them to go through. Yeah. And there was a part in the introduction, too, where Stephanie says that she wished she'd ended Eclipse differently. And I was like, in what way? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because this very much feels like it has an arc. Like, Breaking Dawn goes kind of where there it, it had been intended to the whole time. So, yeah, that was very interesting. So, when I started the audiobook, did you listen to the audiobook this time? I did listen to the audiobook. Okay, okay. So, then we have this kind of shared feeling. I don't know why, but I expected it to be Ileana. Yeah. I it don't wasn't. know why. It wasn't. It wasn't. No. It wasn't. No, it was narrated by Emma Galvin, mm -hmm. and when I started listening to it, first of all, she's got a very smooth voice. Yes, like jazz, um, baby. It's it's so soft. It's like butterscotch. It's like, mm. and I thought during the first part of it, I was like, I recognize this girl's voice from somewhere. Now I took the <laughs> I took the audacity well, um, <laughs> to find where she has done on Audible as well. And I thought that I would just oh, no. share some of those with Here you. Here we go. So what I recognized her from was Divergent series. Right. Because, hi, one of my personal favorites. But I thought that I would just share some of these other ones with you because she has a very lengthy kind of film credit here, but sure. through audiobooks instead. So some of the other ones include A Girl's Guide to Witchcraft. Mood. <laughs> the Zom B series. All right. Gorilla Beach, which is Snooki's book. Oh, this is amazing! <laughs> um, wow. Glee, The Beginning. Wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Children of Paranoia, which is me as hell. Yeah, yeah, that's a mood. So, sorry, did somebody think, hey, Glee as a television show, great. <laughs> Why not do a novelization? Multiple novelizations. Yep. That seems like a bad move, don't you think? <sighs> I just like fine wine. This, <laughs> uh, this audiobook narrator, I swear. Um, she's also narrated a ton of vampire books, like so many that I couldn't even add in all the the titles on here. But Damn. I just she's like, like found her niche. <laughs> yeah, she's found a lot. So I just thought that, that was really interesting. Now we <laughs> someone mm -hmm. uh requested on twitter that we have a lot of talking points on here about brie tanner so brie as was briefly mentioned in mm -hmm. eclipse is a newborn vampire and we i don't know we kind of talked about this during eclipse too mm -hmm. like it's 
very short and snappy. Right. Like, her lifespan within Eclipse is, I mean, I think it's even described in the novella, too, like, within minutes. Right. That she's, she meets the Cullens, and then she dies. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it's called the short second life for a reason. Right. Um, but yeah, so, it's basically, the way that it was described in the introduction is that Stephanie Meyer wanted to write basically a day in the life mm -hmm. of a newborn to understand Riley's like coven but right. it turns into basically i think she said like four days in there yeah or something like a little so under not, a week yeah it's not it's not too much and she's supposed to be well i mean she's kind of the foil to bella but mm -hmm. in some ways not really it's just that stephanie meyer loves a good b name so listen <laughs> don't we all <laughs> i mean hey one of the things that I was interested in your opinions about is that this novella starts off with another newspaper uh, headline. <laughs> and I just... I'm just... I'm gonna... I'm gonna buy an AP style <laughs> book and I will send it to Steph's P.O. box or whatever the fuck. I'll just leave it on her doorstep. Like, Steph, if you want to write news, read the fucking style book. Just, yeah, just like, please. look. Or, like, I'll just print out, like, a, a article. Because that seems like she hasn't read one. <laughs> Right. In what world would we get away with putting Seattle under siege? <laughs> Death toll rises again. Like, that's a clickbait article. <laughs> did that, yeah. Did, sorry, did BuzzFeed write this? I don't understand. Literally. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, I just, I can't. But yeah, Me so <laughs> it starts off, Brie is, I think, described as, like, 15 or 16. Uh-huh. I don't even think that she remembers how old yeah, she is. Yeah, she was like, I don't fucking know. And she doesn't have a good home life. Mm -mm. She, like, left. I mean, I think she even says, like, she left before she could get a license. Her dad said that if she left, she would starve, which she does. Yeah. And she turns because Riley offers her a, a burger, mm -hmm. which becomes the, quote, cheeseburger of pain. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's so good. It's so it's, good. Yeah, it's it's pretty damn good. So I mean, you compare that to Bella, and Bella doesn't have well up until she got to work. She didn't have a great life, right. but she had enough food on the table and right. you know those kinds of things. So yeah. so I don't know. I was very interested because this is the first thing from you know Stephanie Meyer's repertoire that I hadn't read before, and uh -huh. so it felt really weird, like. I had to pay attention, right. so I was like, fuck, I don't know any of this. <laughs> there's, there's people in this world that I don't know. Yeah. What was it like to, like, read a new Twilight thing for the first time in a very long time? Um, well, I was expecting worse, uh -huh. I guess. And I mean, list, list. <laughs> it's, it's Stephanie, so, like, right. it's not... The bar I, is low. <laughs> yeah, the bar is very low, but... I actually enjoyed it, mm -hmm. which I was not expecting. There were genuinely, like, funny moments, and there were characters that I was like, wait, what the fuck? These people never come up again. Like, yeah. I don't... And I understood, because, like, right, these people die. Right. It felt, like, very... Uh, this is a rude comparison to make people are probably gonna get pissed about this, but it felt very Rogue One to me. Sure, yeah. Of, like, here's some backstory kind of thing. To make everything else kind of fall into place and, like, make yeah, yeah. understand um, everything. Well, and actually, that's a good transition, because, so, we, there's a couple of the characters in this that we don't ever see in movies. No. And so, I was trying to think, like, who would play these people if uh -huh. they got into movies, right? And so, I was curious who you thought would be a good actor for Diego, who's Bree's kind of love interest. Love? In Oh, God, I wish you gave me this question earlier so I had time to think about it. I mean, we can we can just kind of pose it and then come back to it later, if you want. Uh, uh, I, I've been trying to think, like, who would be a good actor for, like, Diego and, like, Fred, I yeah. guess. Because Fred, like, and I want to talk about him a lot because I mm. love this character. Mm -hmm. The So, okay, and I guess we can kind of give brief descriptions now. So Diego, he's this... I guess he's supposed to be this kind of, like, super cool, calm, not like the rest of all these newborns who right. are, you know, <laughs> flipping cars and setting up <laughs> on fire, right? And, like, 
comparing themselves to Spider-Man and Hulk. Like, Stephanie loves her superheroes, right? Really does. She loves, she loves her, like, Marvel Universe and stays within it very specifically. And so he's, he's meant to be kind of, like, suave and he's like his Riley's right hand man Mm -hmm. and all this stuff and so when (laughs) when Brie like sees him she's like well he's pretty that's annoying (laughs) (laughs) what the fuck actually and she even mentions too like well everybody's pretty but he's like (laughs) <laughs> different <laughs> and I don't know I was kind of there was a part of me that was annoyed by this right because her life is so short I was like why is Stephanie giving this a romance like it doesn't right. need yeah. a romance but it was interesting that there it was more of like a friendship that yeah. they had which was I guess better and I don't know I don't know a lot of Diego's in my life the ones that I do they're like shitheads <laughs> so the only person that I could imagine when I was imagining Diego in this novella was Diego Luna okay and I was like you know with the way that Emma like portrays his character and like his voice throughout this mm-hmm. I feel like that would probably be good yeah I'm a fan of that. uh yeah but I'm really curious how you feel about Ricky Fred because Ugh. I just <laughs> my heart what a power. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like this was a good place to, like, really get into, like, oh, some of these vampire powers can be ridiculous. <laughs> and here we right. go. Fucking Fred. Yeah. yeah, he has something that literally is never mentioned again. No. and It's the time like, turner of this universe. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that Stephanie just, like, brought this up and was like, oh, well, we're just never gonna touch on this again. Yeah, this can't be useful um, later on. Ah. Yeah. Well, and the weird thing, too, is, so when Brie was initially describing, like, where she hangs out in this basement, Mm -hmm. I was, like, I couldn't understand what she was talking about of, like, well, I hang out behind Fred. And I was, like, what are you, what are you talking about? You hang out behind someone. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Until she actually gets there and it's, like, oh, okay, so he has a power where he, like, repulses people. Like, literally. And so so in order to get close to him, she's, like, putting her body at risk to Mm -hmm. do that. But it's just so interesting to me that, like, eventually, like, she becomes, like, buddy-buddy with him. And so (laughs) she, like, becomes inside his inner circle so she doesn't get impacted by the effects of him anymore. (laughs) I don't know. I just thought that was cute. The fucked up thing, though... And I don't know, this is very Stephanie Meyer, of, like, when she actually gets to look at him and he's, like, handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, like, he has this power of, like, repulsing people. Right. I was like, okay, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> the fucked up thing, though, so when she was describing him the whole time, did you watch Boy Meets World? I did, yes. Okay, so when she was describing Freaky Fred, for some <laughs> reason, I don't know why my mind went this way, but I was imagining Eric Matthews, but specifically Eric Matthews when he goes by Plays with Squirrels. Oh, the one where he has, like, the... <laughs> <laughs> like, the beard and, like, <laughs> the long biblical hair. Yeah, that's I don't a know good, why. That's a good look. But, like, once she was, like, oh, he's, like, handsome, I was, like, oh, well, he's probably some, like, fucking Chad Michael Murray motherfucker. Like, <laughs> he's probably, like, really cute or something, so. How annoying. <laughs> yeah. Of course he is. I'm like, bored. <laughs> <laughs> What's Chad Michael Murray doing right now? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Probably running, like, an organic juice bar. I, fair enough. <laughs> I don't know, because I never watched... Is he, does he, has he written books? That's fucked up. What? Yo, <laughs> I'm looking into it right now. Oh my god. I didn't <gasps> mean. He has. He's written fictional books. Oh my god. Chad. Oh my god. Mr. Murray. Chad. Uh, yeah, he has one coming out in November. Wow, fucking get ready, everyone. Accidental promotion. Well. Listen. Hey. <laughs> not if you pay, not if you don't pay us for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay. But yeah, so listen, I, this book, and I mentioned this before briefly, was very porn heavy. (laughs) Yeah, it Um, was porn, I think, like legally (laughs) classified as porn. I mean, I think so. And the other thing too, and I've talked about this on the pod a lot, I don't do well with the blood. <laughs> and so to listen to four hours of um 
very explicit mm-hmm. descriptions of blood yep. um, being taken out of bodies yep. and people hearing and seeing blood pulsing under skin. Like, that's a no. Yep. That's a hard pass. <laughs> that's a red light for me. Thank you, though. Yeah, especially when, like, in the end where they, where she, like, meets the clones and everything, and, like, she's, like, standing right next to Bella, and she's like, I will, I know this dude, I know Edward's gonna, like, fucking come for me if I eat her, but, like, I want to eat her so bad. Like, her blood is, like, pumping. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, 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 relax. No, thank you. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to mention, too. So, more characterization, I guess, about Brie. In surprising characterization to nobody Brie Tanner is a vampire nerd a self-described vampire nerd. oh my god <laughs> so there is some similarities between Brie and Bella I guess yeah Bella alone in her computer googling vampire <laughs> <laughs> well even there's that part where Brie and Diego like break into the store to get like books mm-hmm. and music and stuff and she spends most of her time just like reading books alphabetically that's like you wow. okay well same I mean I would also spend my eternal life doing that but like shut up (laughs) but like she doesn't know how to like be rowdy to save her life which Mm -hmm. I thought was adorable party Um, girl yeah well there's just like some interesting things about her character too and I guess some of it comes with the fact that she left home so early like she doesn't really have the social skills to understand when high fives are coming and there's some parts where like I don't know she's kind of scrappy like she's super casual about the fact that she's had her arm ripped off right and it's just like damn okay Brie like all right fuck yeah yeah she's just super chill about all of it i was curious how you felt about some of the debunking of the vampire theories because it was more cheesy i felt like in twilight but in here it felt a little bit more natural to me yeah i think like i don't know when we saw edward like step into the sun it was like this whole production right it was just like wow look at me I'm a vampire, I'm sparkling, (laughs) I'm beautiful, I'm a model, and you're just like, I, I'm okay, actually, skip. But, like, this, like, in the context, it's very much, like, all they know is what Riley tells them, and, but, and, and because of that also what Victoria tells him, like, and that's how they know literally everything about the, their world and their new world, and so the fact that they're just, like, the context behind is going, like, we don't know if this guy is even telling us the truth, and, like, there's more at stake, it's not just somebody being, like, Wow, let's just take off my fucking shirt. Because all they are taught to believe that if they go out into the sun, they will, like, die or, like, burst into flames. Right. And so they're just, like, mm-hmm. testing it, and they, like, do this whole thing. And it's just like, wow, no, I'm just, like, glittering. What the fuck is that? That's actually a really good transition, too. So Riley is a lot more manipulative yeah. in this and I think it's also because we just get to see mm-hmm. a lot more of Riley in this, too. Right. But it, there's a very distinct transition that Stephanie makes between Riley being kind of out of the loop, mm-hmm. kind of pre-Volturi right. discussing things with Victoria and Riley, and then post when he kind of, I don't know, becomes his final form. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's still a lot that Riley obviously doesn't know that Victoria keeps from him. Like, it it still keeps intact with the Eclipse timeline, Mm -hmm. where he has the betrayal at the end. But as we kind of find out, and I felt bad for Brie, too, because it felt very obvious to me that Diego, like, dies. Right. And so the fact that she, like, I don't know, went with the army and, like, followed Riley. And I was like, honey, Diego's dead. Like, <laughs> Baby. When, when Riley, like, comes down the steps and you keep looking and Diego's not there, I was like, babe, she's, oh. Uh, oh. like, he's not coming back. But, yeah, I was very interested because that whole conversation of the, like, in the pink house with the Volturi, like, that never, you know, that didn't happen in Eclipse. Right. And it's, like, never brought up again. And so for the fact that they were actually, like, in cahoots about the Cullen clan will really inform what happens in Breaking Dawn. So that's, like, good information to know. I want to talk about what happens once she actually gets to the battlefield, though. Mm. Um, Because that's, like, a whole different scenario. Because we're seeing it from Bree's perspective and not Bella's perspective. I was thankful that Fred, like, dipped out. Yeah. Uh, like, he used his powers and was like, actually, fuck everybody. Oh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stay alive, mm-hmm. so thanks. Later. Um, but it was just so interesting to see her describe Carlisle and Esme. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. From her perspective. And then, like, Jasper's reaction to Bree, Mm -hmm. too. And, oh, especially when Bella gets there, right? And Bella's like, I can't believe that Jasper, like, is he in pain with all those bites and stuff? Like, did he actually fight? And the fact that Bree was like, obviously he fought. He has all those bites on there. Like, what did you think he was doing? Like, (laughs) it was just such an interesting change of perspective between those two people. I don't know. I just, that was a whole different perspective that I was thankful for. Wasn't expecting to get, I guess. (laughs) Especially because in the Eclipse novel, we don't get the part where Jasper requires Bree to cover her ears. Yeah. We just see the part where he's, like, growling at her to not move, which is interesting. I was curious how you felt about Bree and Edward at the end, when she's, like, trying to transfer all that information to him before she dies. Right. She, like, has figured out that she's gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. She, as soon as the Volturians start even walking, she's like, well, I'm toast. Uh, later, everyone. She's, like, the <laughs> only one to survive. And she's like, well, that's a, my turn to go, actually. It's been chill. Yeah. Um, this life has been sweet. Uh, gotta say bye. Everyone I know I love is dead. Lit. Um, <laughs> and so, like, she doesn't really understand... Like, she knows that they have powers, but she's also just kind of, like, unsure about how everyone knows anything. And so Edward, like, keeps talking to Volturi, being like, hey, no, she's chill. And she's like, what? How did you know that? Oh, okay. (laughs) She just, like, starts funneling, like, every, like, a whole manifesto from her brain into his and being like, please, God, I I literally never wanted to fight anyone. I just want to, like, live. Please, God. Well, and that's the, um, I don't know, the fucked up thing about her, too, right, is that she gets to the battlefield late. Mm-hmm. Once the fighting is, like, almost done. Yeah. She sees Riley leave and, like, has that, like, final betrayal, mm-hmm. right? And she literally doesn't fight anyone. No. Carlisle goes and, like, almost hurts her. And then he's like, oh, wait. Like, she hasn't hit it. Like, she yeah. hasn't even shown. She hasn't done a hit. <laughs> she hasn't done a hit. <laughs> um, and that's the thing. And so Jane, please. Like, she hey, hasn't done a hit. Like, she's fine. <laughs> So once she surrenders, like, it's the obvious choice of, like, she was literally just betrayed into being here. Right. There's no probable cause for it. But yeah, so, I don't know. I just thought that it was interesting that they had this connection that, like, literally wasn't discussed in Eclipse because how would Bella know? Mm -hmm. But it was just this, like, unspoken agreement, and she felt okay dying because the fact that Edward had, like, killed Riley and Victoria. She was like, well, I'm good now, Yeah, she's like, you know what? I don't know this man, but I trust him. (laughs) He's a homie. He stuck out for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just love the fact that, like, she was like, actually, I've never felt more loved and appreciated than the fact that all these people are standing up for me, and I don't know them, and I was like, three, (laughs) baby. (laughs) I just, I'm crying. So, and then, like, the last part, like, listen, I knew she was gonna die. Like, obviously, (laughs) I've watched these movies and read these books so many times, but the fact that, like, it ends Mm -hmm. with her just being like, well, I closed my eyes, like, fuck all y'all. <laughs> but it just, like, hurt, and so... Yeah. That's fucked And up. then it, like, fade into the exit music. It was like, this oh, has I been know. the shortest week life of Bray Danner, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, this has been an audio production. <laughs> I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm crying. Give me a <laughs> fucking second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it automatically took me to my Goodreads to, like, review it. And I was like, shut up, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you need to process. Yeah. But yeah, so Brie Tanner, she's chill. Not the worst thing I've ever read, you know? (laughs) Yeah, she was just trying to, like, live her life, honestly. Uh, She was trying to live her second life. Listen. And no one would let her. Like, truly. (laughs) I just wish that she had gone with Fred and had been able to have her best life there, but. Yeah, well. We can't have it all. So, no. You know what we can have a lot of, though, Cody? What? iTunes reviews. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> Segway um, City. Cody had a fantastic suggestion earlier this week in that we shout out people that have left us reviews. Because, so hey, Cody, hey, hey, y'all step up, all right? Oh, yeah. Cody's this is me off. being bad cop right now. Because I've been good cop for 40 fucking episodes. <gasps> And y'all give me like ten. There are we have a consistent listenership, and I want to see some reviews. They don't have to be a lot. They could just be like a smiley face. They could be like whatever stars you feel fit. But if it's not five, I mean you're a fake fan anyway. But you know what it could be? It could be an apple emoji. 
It could be an Apple emoji. So, like, That's and now true. with the new update, apparently it's a lot easier to, like, review and also see reviews. So, get on yes. that. You have literally no excuse. Yes. We do have a couple of s- reviews that are recent, and I am going to try and read some of these usernames. Yeah. So, I, listen, <laughs> I said blue earlier, so, like, don't come for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can s- I- literally... I'm watching Allie, like, make the photos larger in our Google Doc. Shut up! (laughs) Shut up! (laughs) This first one is from mm, (laughs) Mycovert98. Sure. Um, Iridocyclitis98. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Okay, alright, you go, because I don't, I'm scared. Uh, like Sahara? Oh, shut (laughs) the fuck up. Like, I don't, we don't even... You, you're the worst. Okay. Anyway. Um, this other one is from Pie Luffer. Yep. <laughs> Who are these people? Okay. Um, wow, I really gotta, hold on. Let's get real close and intimate. <laughs> K-J-R-S-T-N-L-Z-B-T-H, which I can, cur, cur, can sure, Who's laughing now? Uh, but yeah, thanks y'all for being the most recent reviews if you want to be shouted out and also if you want to just do a little challenge and like make the most hard to pronounce username just to yeah. see us fuck it up on the podcast <laughs> that could be a fun little game you know what i mean i can't wait until we get one that's like what the fuck is up Kyle?" <laughs> <laughs> the whole review is just that whole vine oh my god yes I just leave it. vine <laughs> <laughs> give us a gift. The other way to give us a gift, though, is to be a patron. Bye bye. Uh, I'm Segway City over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we have a few $10 patrons that I get to shout out today. Our first one is our pride and joy, Jessica Stanley. And our other is our light, our love, Rachel Black. Yeah. And when this comes out, we have one more week of September left. So it's your last week before the new month starts over. So we'd really appreciate it because the new month is when we get our money. Yeah, hop on it. Out. If you want to be a patron, start now because then you'll get charged yeah. first. You won't have you can you can have a whole week without even getting charged, and yeah. you'll just have the gift of giving us patronage. It'll be like, yeah. <laughs> what yeah, a gift that would be. It. Yeah, yeah, we love that a lot. Do we have oh. a fan fiction? Yeah, I thought that I would give us a new one, something light and easy wow. this week. So I reached into the depths of archive of our own and I found <laughs> I found this one by the user God is wearing black. Great. I love it. <laughs> with the tags Bella bashing, parody by a disappointed fan. Bella is still good, but an idiot, and we love her, also hate. So I love it. And it's called Twilight Sucks Less. The summary is a realistic, kinda, yet humorous remake of Twilight. Features a gay Rosalie, a likable Edward, Uh, a grungy Jasper, uh, and Bella being knocked down all the pegs. uh, (laughs) POVs from Edward, Bree, and Kennedy. I have never thought that at such a young age I would die, fall in love, and eat a platypus. I would have settled for 16 cats, but oh well. This is a story of how I, Kennedy Crow, seduced the biggest bitch in the universe, or at least Washington. And then there's like three slashes, so it's probably another character. Mm. Dying from influenza was more agreeable than courting Bella Swan. I would know. I've done both. Mm. Fuck, I hope Esme remembers to buy my shampoo. And then there's three (laughs) more slashes. So I'm not dead? You're deciding not to kill me? Shit, that sounds awesome. Am I still homeless? No? I get to sleep in the basement? That's cool. Do you have any hamburgers? At least I don't look like I swallowed glass and then choked on my evening of nails. <laughs> End scene. Cute. So that's it. I'm a fan. I just thought that it was interesting. Yeah. And small, which is always nice. So small. <laughs> I yep. love it. Well, as we say in Forks. <sighs> get it, y'all. Oh, hi there. Guess who stole Cody's mic and took over the end credits? This is an Earbud Media production. You can pitch a show at bit.ly slash Earbud Pitch. You can check out the network's Twitter at Earbud Media. And while you're doing that, why don't you follow us everywhere at Into the Twilight? Since you're doing that, why don't you just go ahead and check out our Patreon? It's patreon.com slash Into the Twilight. Just as little as a dollar a month, you can get some cool things like pins 
games and books and help us do cool things like live streams. You can always help us out for free with reading and reviewing us on Apple Podcast. Our amazing artwork was done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at your ghost host 44. Our fantastic music was done by Eli Kraus, who you can find at KrausFilms.com. The intro and outro of our podcast is done by KB Smith, who you can find at KB underscore Smith. You can find Cody everywhere online at Cody Captures, and you can find me now everywhere at Into Wild Places. You stayed until the end. Check you out. Good job, and we will check back with you next week. Bye. You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast. The the, the Strange Little People one, Strange right? Little People, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Productions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Uh, yeah. It's really cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm doing it right now, as we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, this, this is happening right now, as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week. <laughs>